learning recovery conversation uh, that uh, we have today. And these are from the public at colleges and universities that are making a, a budget request. Uh, it's all COVID related to learning loss. And first of all, I want to, to welcome the interim president of Evergreen State College, which is John Carmichael. John, are you on with us? I saw you jump on a little. There you are. I see I you. Am. I see you in the in the magic box, and you have a you have a, a a tremendous team with you today. And so, if you don't mind introducing the team, and and we just want to welcome you aboard and 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 joining us today. Yeah, th thank you for making time for us today, and we'll try and be. Uh efficient with this time and help you catch up a little bit. So my name is John Carmichael. By way of introduction, I'm a native Washingtonian. My alma maters include Decatur High School and Federal Way and the Evergreen State College in Olympia. So that's Gators and Gooey Ducks for mascot fans. I've been the <laughs> chief of staff chief of staff at Evergreen, the chief financial officer. And now, at least for the next two years, I'm Evergreen's president. Evergreen, as you know, was founded in the late 1960s in a time of great economic and social upheaval Governor Dan Evans and the founding board of trustees broke the mold to try and create a new kind of college that could meet that historic moment for the state. Last week, we started our 50th academic year, and here we are again at another time of great economic and social upheaval, asking ourselves again uh, at an institution that is uh, founded to be innovative, what, do, what new programs, what new approaches does the state need from us at this point? And as we do that work, we're very conscious of the fact we're part of a larger state system, honored to be here in partnership with the regional comprehensive universities, Central, Eastern, and Western. These four institutions together serve a large number of low-income, first-generation BIPOC students. Evergreen alone, 84% uh, of our student body comes from one or more backgrounds that's traditionally underserved by higher ed. So last year we collaborated on a joint initiative focused on diversity, equity, and inclusion. And this year we're focused on learning in the time of COVID. So what you're about to hear collectively is a $5 million decision package that puts students first. Many of our students through this pandemic have been the essential workers. And if they're going to get through this and emerge on the other side with uh, credentials and college degrees in hand, we need to give them a hand here. So our ask is please support this package. Let legislators know you're hearing about it. And uh, of course, we hope the governor will set it as part of his budget agenda as well. The last thing I'll say and then get out of the way, one of the strengths of the system in, in Washington state is we have a set of really separate and distinct institutions, including the community and technical colleges, research, research universities, land grant institution, uh, distinctive regional comprehensive universities and evergreen. So students have a real choice an opportunity to choose a college that's going to work best for them. And that means this initiative plays out differently on each campus. So we, we need to hear from all four. And in a completely fair and unbiased way, I'm going to invite uh, Jeremy Moan, Evergreen's Director of Government Relations, to start this off. Thank you, President Carmichael. And can you confirm, is everybody seeing uh, my screen, the presentation? Excellent, thank you. Well, good morning. I am, uh, as, as President Carmichael said, I'm uh, Jeremy Moan, Evergreen's Director of Government Relations. And at Evergreen, we are looking holistically at not only how to recover learning opportunities for students, but also thinking about the whole student and how this pandemic and the return to education in person is affecting their mental health, as well as considering how we can evolve on remote instruction moving forward. We know that mental, student mental health and well being are a central and critical aspect of student persistence and success. Uh, for Evergreen, the addition of an associate director to Evergreen's Counseling Center will allow us to restart our graduate intern program in the Counseling Center, increasing our ability to better serve specific student populations. In addition, we propose implementing a peer health education program, and this program will be housed in the newly created Health Promotions Program, which will develop both health promotion efforts and individual intervention services to promote better health and well-being for students and the campus community. On to instructional design, the quick pivot to online learning necessitated by COVID-19 highlighted that prior to 2020, Evergreen had very limited experience teaching online and very little formal training in designing effective online courses. 
So this request is to hire an instructional designer that would partner with faculty and curricular programs to design online course materials that effectively promote learning and student success in virtual asynchronous learning environments. Uh, this will help translate uh, impactful learning experiences from a face to face environment into an online learning environment without losing impact, uh, which not only requires in depth knowledge of technology and learning uh, science research, but also the ability to partner with faculty to help them utilize this information in service of student success. Finally, the COVID-19 pandemic forced colleges, including Evergreen, to teach its classes predominantly in a remote mode from spring of 2020 through summer of 2021. While we were able to successfully transition most academic offerings to remote instruction, there are some academic experiences which are less conducive to remote learning. These include hands-on laboratory work in the sciences and studio work in visual arts and media. Because of the pandemic, Evergreen was unable to offer lab and studio work to most of our students during this period. This is a new temporary problem, and we believe that this is the area of learning recovery which is most relevant to our institution. As such, we propose offering a limited number of skills based classes in science, visual art and media where students can gain hands on lab and studio experience. In addition, we propose adding instructional support staff to aid in the execution of those classes. Evergreen's unique interdisciplinary curricular structure does not require distribution requirements for an undergraduate degree, so these classes would not be restricted. Uh, students could self select these skills classes as required. They would thus be open to continuing Evergreen students who missed lab and studio skills during the pandemic and open to students new to Evergreen who may have missed these opportunities at their previous institutions. Thank you for taking the time to learn about Evergreen's request. Um, we'll take questions at the end. Uh, for now, I'm happy to pass it off to my colleague from Central Washington University, Alethea Miller. Hi, this is Alethea with Central Washington University. Thanks, Jeremy. Um, so we have three proposals related to student success and learning loss in response to the pandemic. So our first proposal is to create a peer to peer mentoring program. So we know that students at Central, they've um, already expressed that they're going to experience challenges going from the online remote learning and the hybrid modality back to in person. And they'd like to um, to to use their peers and other um, and other their um, students as mentors and you know at Central we already have a really strong um, mentoring program in uh, relative to tutors in the academic sense which is our PALS program which is why we'd like to replicate that with the Wildcat academic mentoring program which would serve as a trauma-informed peer mentoring program um, and it would be a trauma-informed response care for students and this would use graduate students and peer fellows that would be able to mentor or the undergraduate students. Um, so the goal would be to provide student supports and effective time management strategies um, in work life balance strategies for learning um, and also include some um, some information on self care and obviously um, some support in the transition from hybrid modalities and back to in person. So we know from past experience that students at Central really appreciate getting mentored and learning from other students, which is why we're proposing this peer to peer model. Um, so the second proposal that we have is a jumpstart program, which is a pre orientation program. So you know, Central Washington University is the most um, it's the most diverse public university in Washington with 40% of our students um, with 40% of our students being people of color. So we have the opportunity to improve the student success of these underserved students by by creating an intentional um, transition program for them. So the idea would be to create a jumpstart pre orientation program where these students would arrive to campus one week earlier to orientation. They would be able to learn from faculty and staff and be able to do a lot of different sessions on campus. Um, and then and then this would make it so that students who are first generation um, are going to feel a lot more comfortable on campus and um, they're more likely to be successful long term. And um, we're the reason for the jumpstart program ideas. This has been successful in other states with other universities who have done it, and um, they found that it really does help students from underrepresented and underserved backgrounds, and that's something Central Washington University um, really cares about. 
The last program um, that we're looking at doing is a faculty group hire. So, you know, with 40% of our students being people of color, we'd really like to replicate that in the faculty and staff. Right now, um, our faculty um, ratio of diversity is only at 11%. So what we'd like to do is create a cohort model where we would hire a cohort of faculty of color, and then they would be available to advise and mentor students and, and also one another. Um, and so, um, the long term goal is that this is something that that we could replicate across the years and hopefully expand upon it long term. So now I'll pass it off to my colleague at Western Washington University, Elisa. Thank you, Alethea. And my name is Elisa Hicks. I'm the Government Relations Policy and Affairs Coordinator at Western. I'll be presenting to you today because Becca Kenna Shank, our director, is currently out on maternity leave. We here at Western are striving to return to pre-pandemic operations, but the university is more committed than ever to advancing inclusive success and addressing barriers to access and completion. The global pandemic has intensified equity gaps across society, including in higher education. Students of color, low-income students, and first-generation students were already facing significantly higher barriers to education before the pandemic, and now face even greater challenges in a post-pandemic society. Over the next few years, Western will be strategically focused on recovering from declines in student enrollment as a result of the pandemic, particularly among first generation and low income students, as well as refocusing on student retention and success initiatives and helping students get back on track to academic success following pandemic related disruptions that have occurred during their education. There are four main areas to Western's request to address these issues. The first being inclusive access which focuses on increasing enrollment at Western's Bellingham and Peninsula campuses by providing critical services throughout the student life cycle from admissions advising and recruitment to financial aid, orientation, registration, and all the way through to graduation. Improving student access and engagement by building and maintaining the system's infrastructure for effective and timely communication with our students, adapting to changes in teaching modalities, and providing culturally responsive services for an increasingly diverse student population. The second area of our request is in retention and academic success, which includes targeted investments for supportive student personnel services. The key to community building and retention is in identifying the different touch points that exist for underrepresented students and filling in the gaps. Research at Western has shown that students who utilize central advising services for example, are retained at higher at levels higher than non users and that difference is greater for those from underrepresented groups. To be able to improve student to staff ratios will create greater capacity for these intentional services targeted at those students who need this guidance the most. Western's request also includes investments in the mental health and well being of our students. Additional investments are needed in the areas of counseling and health and wellness to help holistically support students, especially the ones who are at the most risk of marginalization. The final aspect of our request is Western on the peninsulas. The Kitsap and Olympic Peninsula regions are one of the most underserved regions of the state when it comes to access to baccalaureate and master's level post-secondary degree programs. Funding in the 2020 supplemental budget trans transitioned six undergraduate degree programs at the Peninsula's campuses to state funding. In academic year 21, due in part to this increased affordability and a targeted outreach campaign, enrollment in Western on the Peninsula's grew by 17%. With the long-term goal of expanding programs and increasing access to four-year educational opportunities in this geographical location, the immediate need remains for focused outreach and recruitment efforts and hands on advising and career support in these location facilities. Thank you for considering supporting our joint request and I will now pass the presentation baton on to my colleague David Burai at Eastern Washington University. Thank you so much, Elisa, and it's just great to see all of you, even if it's just virtually. I look forward to the times when we're able to uh, see each other in 3D. Dr. Johnson, Christine Johnson, great to see you. We need to get together soon. Uh, you'll find a lot of common threads running through these presentations, and that's why, as Dr. Carmichael said, we've uh, combined this to uh, make really regional university assets that have statewide impact. 
And so uh, Eastern Washington University's two um, requests uh, or request focus really on two areas. One is FAFSA completion. We all know that this is a challenge. Free application for federal student aid. This is really the building block. If you don't get over this hurdle, the chances of you going on to a CTC or a four year university are extraordinarily small. Uh, WASAC is doing some innovative and we think some really uh, positive things throughout the state, but it, 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 it's difficult for them to do the personal reaction or the personal interaction that uh, needs to be um, help these students be successful. Overall statewide, uh, the FAFSA rate has completion rate is down about 6%. In our region, um, we don't have a, a school that's even doing that well. We're down to below 8% or lower. And so this is something that really is affecting um, our college going rate. This is a uh, it will be an Eastern initiative, but really will help every we're we're not we're not trying to be Eastern specific. We want more students going to school, going to uh, college and, and, and universities, and, and we know we'll get our share. So what this does is reaches out into our areas and helps. There's kind of three areas that people go through. They go through submission, completion, and verification, and it's easy to stop out at each one of those times. And so our proposal uh, puts two uh, people in the region that helps community-based organizations, helps school districts, um, in, and help students and families get through that process successfully. That's our FAFSA completion initiative. Secondly, and again, I'm just reiterating what our, my other colleagues have said, uh, students need wraparound services. This is our second uh, student body uh, class that has not been on a, on a campus. And so they need wraparound services. So Eagle Care Network is our second initiative. And what that really does is, is kind of take, um, in a lot of ways, a, 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 a medical look at how, you know, when we walk into a doctor, um, they have our background and they know what we're, we're um, um, going with. And so um, this uh, will do something similar. Oftentimes when somebody stops out at Eastern Washington University, we, sit, we hear, well, it's, it's financial. And, and certainly that plays a role in it, but oftentimes it's it's a job, it's a social change, it's something else that have happened in their lives and um, financially is kind of one of the easiest things to say. So what we want to do with this Eagle Care Network is really build a network of folks that are more able to be more proactive and, and get to students before it becomes a crisis and help them before their grades or before the financial state or before the um, uh, financial situation or the family situation deteriorates in such a way that their chance of completing is, is really gets um, low. So we want to be more proactive in that and we want to encourage them and wrap, give wraparound services that um, get us to the next level and, and help them um, compete and complete. So um, we will open that up for questions. As Dr. Carmichael said, President Carmichael said, we would so appreciate, this, uh, appreciate the leaders on this group um, being able to support that $5 million ask. It will be a $5 million ask that affects every region in the state at your regional universities. So thank you very much. Uh, open to any questions. And Dr. Carmichael, if there's questions, I'll kind of let you do the, the hand calling. Thank you. This is James. I'm just saying thank you each of the campuses and, and representatives from the campuses for sharing your individual slice of this work that has a statewide impact. Uh, President Carmichael or interim President Carmichael, how you want to be salutated. I'd like to say president, you're there for two years, so that's not interim. That's a that's the job. <laughs> it is yours. So with that uh, being said, would you uh, like to Put something on the floor or entertain any questions from the, the, the alliance. Uh, uh, we'd like to entertain questions. We, we know you're a little bit behind this morning, so appreciate the time you have. But if you've got time for questions, we'd be glad to take them. We have about five minutes. Questions. There are no questions from the floor. Oh, there's a question that's uh, can't see the name, but there's a hand up. Hi, it's Eleni Papadakis, uh, Executive Director of the State Workforce Board. And first, I, I, I want to applaud folks for the very thoughtful look at what was um, what was keeping students from from completing. Um, but I wanted to talk about the mental health investments and what you guys described. Uh, as the needs of your students and especially your marginalized students uh, is exactly what we're experiencing across the state. Um, and we are lacking uh, professionals in mental health 
who look like or have the lived experiences of the people in their communities, much like the students that you're talking about. And I'm wondering if you thought at all about maybe partnering with community mental health, maybe thinking about how by developing those programs at your institutions, you might be supporting our community mental health networks that are just desperate for these professionals. Well, I'll jump in that really quick and thank you so much. You're, you're exactly right. There's a real there's a real challenge for all of us. Um, Eastern Washington University has one of the largest, if not the largest social work programs. And so um, one of the things that we um, think is going to be doing a partner is to, is to partner um, those students. We're actually doing wanting to do with this investment a case management um, type of um, assessment for those folks that are doing our, our 2.6 GPA or lower, so that it really will be a, a, a case manager that will have this person and, and kind of um, just really be able to partner with that person. So I hope that helps. But you're, you're right, Elena, this is something that obviously has some statewide um, challenges. Yeah, thanks, David. I, I will add to that that uh, we're also aware that we're in a community where mental health resources are already strained. And so uh, there's certainly opportunities for partnerships. We think the most efficient move we can make is to leverage peer networks that we have available on campus so that uh, we can have culturally responsive uh, interventions at, at, at a, that are effective and financially cost, cost effective. You know, a lot of the community mental health centers are looking at peer counseling as well. Uh, so, I, you know, I, I think there's so much symmetry in what you all are talking about. Um, but I just I just love to see you guys uh, leverage each other's efforts. But I'm all, all for the, the investments that you folks are asking for. I, I think it's, as I say, a really thoughtful proposal. Thank you. the collaboration amongst institutions and thoughtfulness across the state. So I'm looking to see more and I'd like to thank uh, President Carmichael for for uh, facilitating uh, this conversation, bringing it up to the uh, Alliance. This is important for us to see and hear being done and you're thinking about this across the state. So David, thank you. I want to thank it. Uh, Elisa, are you out there? Are you, <clears throat> you're still there. Yes, thank you, as yeah. well as Alathena as, and Jeremy for all your support uh, today.